we're going to be going over how to create higher order resolvers. Now these I haven't actually seen a whole lot of people use, and I think it's going to be something more and more people are going to start using, because it's going to just save you a lot of time and code reuse you're going to get out of it applying this to your project or business. So the idea with this is instead of us writing out resolvers uh, that are very similar, so for example I might have a create product resolver and I may have a create link resolver or I don't know whatever other thing you have create person for example um, you're gonna do then you may do that in a very similar manner and so you may want to reuse the code between them and so we can create a function that creates both of those resolvers for us and we just pass in parameters to change what types are being returned and whatnot uh, so we're going to dive into what that looks like and we're going to do just a basic example here with how to do basically that uh, replication or code reuse across creating multiple types of entities. So usually when I'm doing this, what I like to do is just start off writing it uh, the first time if I wasn't going to reuse it. So we'll make it as specific as possible. So for example, we're going to start by just doing a create user resolver. Now usually we would use like register to create a user, but we're just going to use the user entity as an example since we already have that made. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new resolver here. So I'm going to say create user resolver and this is going to be a mutation and we're going to import or at least we're going to return from this mutation a, a user um, and then here we're going to have a function which I'm going to call create user so that's the name of our mutation so let's go ahead and import some of these things mutation uh, user and I'm not seeing user here we'll import that in a second I guess let's see what it's mad at us about uh, we don't have decorators we sure have that in our uh, TS config so we'll just restart uh, we're gonna add an argument here which I'm just gonna call data and this is gonna be called data and what this is gonna be is I'm gonna just reuse the register input that we've already created uh, but this type what it is is again it's just the first name last name email it's the fields that we need to create a user um, and so here I'm just going to say return user.create pass in my data dot save. Now we're not doing any kind of hashing of the password. This is a very basic create example that we're starting with here. So uh, yeah, we're just taking the data that we get from the input and then we are saving this. Uh, so we can come over here and we can actually import this uh, into our project. Where is our build schema? Uh, we, we change that into a utility function called create schema. So I can say create user here. And then if we let this restart, we can go ahead and we can see our thing here. So if we click on create user, uh, we get a, a type where we return the user and we have this data prop which has these fields that we can pass in. So now let's see how we can generalize this and basically create the same thing we just did here with a higher order uh, resolver. But actually before we jump into the higher order part, I want to show how you can do this from the type GraphQL docs. They have a section about resolver inheritance. So this is kind of the starting point where I started and kind of expanded upon. So I'm going to copy their example right here and I'll link this below if you want to copy it as well. Um, so I'm going to just create I'm just going to create above here, but you may want to put this in a separate file. So I'm going to say create base resolvers just fine. We're going to import class type from type GraphQL. Um, and so you'll notice we're taking two things in, a suffix and an object type. Uh, we'll look at what those are in a second. Uh, we have to say is abstract here. We'll get rid of that in a second. Um, I'm going to get rid of this items here. Basically the idea is we're going to be able to move our mutation up here and then pass in parameters to make it generic. So one of the things that's generic is the return type. So for a user, I want to return a user, but let's say we have a product, I want to return a product from that mutation. So you'll notice what you can do is you can take this object type and that's actually what you can return here from this function. And the other thing is you can actually pass in a second parameter is what you want the name of it to be. So you want a different name for each one, you can change that here. Um, so let's go ahead and copy this mutation and we're going to just pop it in below here. 
So for us, this object type, uh, we can just call this the return value makes most sense to me or return type. And we're gonna just paste that in right here. So they're, they're doing a array, but we only need one. And then for the name here, I'm gonna say create and then whatever the suffix is. Um, so I'm gonna say suffix. And then this, I'm just gonna name it create because it's a generic create. And um, we actually wanna take the uh, register input as well as a, so here I'm gonna say input type and we could make that a T and I don't know what else they, the second one they usually use. I was gonna use an uppercase X as the generic for this. Um, we could also put the type any, that would work too. We don't really need to type this, I don't think. Um, and so we could say input type here. And then we have to actually specifically, oops. And actually, you know what? Yeah, we do need to do T, that would be better. And I think actually we need to do it in this way. I don't think we can do any. So we'll go back to X. Because we need to make sure that type GraphQL can read the type. I don't know if it would work or not if we did any there, but we're gonna use any in a second. So this is our input type here. Um, and so here I'm just gonna say, you could use type of, or you can say any here. That's where it's okay to say any. So here what I'm doing is I'm passing the input type to type GraphQL. So now it knows what to set the GraphQL type to. And that's what we're gonna pass in. And this will make more sense when we pass this in a second. So then instead of a user here, we wanna make that generic as well. We're gonna pass in the entity, which I'm just gonna say is any. All right, so get rid of this. So now let's look at this generic thing that we've made. So we're gonna pass in a suffix. So that's help us name it. We're gonna pass in what the GraphQL, uh, basically mutation should return. We should pass in what it takes as its uh, input type. And we need to pass in what the, res the entity which we actually create for. So next, if we go back to their example, we can create this base resolver and then we can extend from it. So I'm gonna say base create user. And so here I'm gonna pass in uppercase user. So it's gonna be called create user. Um, and then here we're gonna pass in the return type, which is gonna be user, our input type, which is register input. And then lastly, uh, the, the entity, which again is user. So here we can now say extends base create user and we don't actually need that inside of there now. So we can save this. And yeah, so let's let this restart. And now if I come over here and I restart this, we're gonna notice nothing has changed from our create user. Um, so you'll notice we still have this register input type, we still are returning a user. So what we've gained now is we have this function to create that for us. So now if we have more than one entity, so for example, I was talking about a product, we could create a product here, we can copy what we have from our user entity, this is just an example, and we can say product here. And maybe the product only has two values, an ID and a name. All right, so now I can come over to my create user um, and I can say base create product. And so I'd like this to have a name of create product. We're gonna use the product entity. Um, we need to create our input type here. So input type, class product input. And then here we're just gonna have a single field, which we're gonna call name, which is a string. So we can use this product input here, pass in our product entity as well. And then all we have to do is we can create another class that we extend. And of course you can add more uh, resolvers inside of this class too, by the way. So create product resolver, and this is gonna extend the base create product. 
So now back to our build schema or create schema. We just need to import that. So we create product resolver um, and we'll let this restart. See, we have a problem in our product. We'll get rid of that, save. So now if I refresh this, you'll notice we have now this create product. If I click on it, we're returning the type product, which we can see is an ID in the name field. Click on the data, you can pass in a name string because it's the input that we wanted. Uh, and so now we've made this generic, this generic resolver, which we can use in these different cases. Now, of course, this is a very basic example. Um, and the only thing we're doing is we're saying create here, but you can make this uh, more complex if you need to. I also want to share with you basically one step that I've made to just make this a little simpler. Uh, I think you can just skip the whole extending part and just go ahead and return a new resolver. So what I do is just not even make this thing abstract and you can kill that. Uh, you may actually be able to just keep the abstract part. I can't remember if it works with uh, extract abstract or not. Uh, but here we're just going to say create resolver. Um, Actually, let's just F, I'm going to do F2 so it renames it everywhere. So now instead of extending the class, I can get rid of this step. And we can just export this. So now basically what I'm doing here is I'm just saying calling the create resolver function and it's going to return me a full fledged class that I can use as my resolver. Um, so that's restarted. Again, we can refresh and look at it um, and see if we get a product. Yep, still there. And let's just make sure the create product does work. Uh, data name, hey. And we'll get both those fields back. Run that, and cool, it looks like it worked. Um, the only other thing that I wanted to mention is, uh, so some things that, uh, there's, there's some ways that you can make this generic and other ways that I found more difficult. So you'll see as you're adding these things that some things are harder to do. Like for example, maybe sometimes you want to add the authorized, uh, decorator to the, uh, mutation here. And sometimes you don't. So that was one thing where I wasn't really sure how to like basically add a decorator at runtime. Um, so one thing that I have done before is use the use middleware instead of authorized. And then what you can do is you can have an argument that's like middleware, right? And this can be, you know what, middleware, copy that. We can copy that type so we actually do the right type. And then we can say dot, 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 middleware. Oh, did I mess up the type? Oh, because it's possibly undefined. We can do this. If it's, def we can say middleware or an empty array. Uh, so then what this does is you can pass any middleware that you want and it'll be added before the resolver runs. Um, so that's one thing, but yeah, you'll notice like the other thing is like being able to add the, the big, the big thing that I've noticed is being able to kind of like add decorators at runtime is the main thing that I've run into that. I'm not sure if it's possible, uh, but I really think this has a lot of potential to add. You can kind of start creating resolvers that are not just, this is great for crud, like doing create, read, update, delete, and you can add whatever logic you want in here to make it more complex. But I think where this also is going to be super helpful is you can now start creating resolvers that you can reuse that are not just CRUD that are uh, related to the business. And that's where something like uh, Prisma is super nice or Hasura, PostGraphile, Post where they are like automatically creating the resolvers for you. You can kind of do a similar thing now, but you get to customize some of the things so you can get more than just CRUD, which I think is a very cool direction you can go in.